We request uh, the participants to please turn their videos off. We request the participants to please keep their videos off. Uh, Professor Bondapadhyay, are you ready? It's seven, so we can start now. Sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. 
Welcome to the Progress and Prospects in Biology webinar series. Uh, we thank you again for joining us from all over the globe. So before we start, there are a few housekeeping rules that I would like to remind everyone. Please make sure to keep your microphones muted, your videos off during the lecture, and please do not share your screens at any time. Otherwise, we will be forced to remove, remove you from the meeting and not readmit you. I request everyone to keep the presentation window pinned to your screen so that we can continue uninterrupted. You can post your questions in the chat box in both Google Meet and YouTube, which shall be addressed to at the end of the lecture. If you have any questions not related to today's talk, please feel free to email us. And the link for the feedback form will be given at the end of the meet and not it will not be shared by email. So now, I would like to request our mentor and conven convener of the series, Professor Rena Ray Banerjee of the Department of Zoology, University of Calcutta, to welcome and introduce today's speaker, Professor Orun Bondapadhyay. Uh, Ma'am, over to you. Uh, thank you, Shinjini. Shinjini was very strict about certain rules, and I request, I can see two very familiar faces. Hello, Shelly Mashi and Shomir Meshno. So nice to see you. I know for today, Orunda's talk, you could not stay away. So it is nice to see you. But as Shinjini has uh, instructed, in no uncertain terms, you will have to switch up your videos so that we can preserve the bandwidth. And I could also see yeah. Priyanka, who is my student as well as Orunda's student. So I think today promises to be um, a, an exceptional talk and in every way possible. So a very warm welcome to all the uh, participants uh, on uh, another episode. Today is the 18th talk uh, of Progress and Prospects in Biology. Uh, and uh, this uh, virtual platform was put together by the collective enthusiasm of uh, some of my students. Uh, they are either postdocs or PhD students themselves. And the long-term vision of this uh, platform is a meeting of minds. And today, Professor Orun Bandapadhyay's talk uh, is going to give us some uh, food for thought uh, for the mind. And uh, so we uh, uh, we promise to achieve that long-term vision by arranging these webinars by scientists from all walks of life, uh, including but not limited to biology, because as you see, in uh, problem solving in biology, we need to probably uh, have a convergence of all kinds of skills. Uh, so um, today our speaker is very special because he is known as a very uh, eminent um, uh, cardiac biologist. And uh, some of the participants have already asked me why he is not speaking on cardiac biology. And I assure you that Professor Bandapata has assured us that he will give a talk on his core area of research. But today he will be talking about something else. But um, he probably would not have arrived at that had he not gone through the rigor of the research that I'm going to um, uh, introduce him with. Uh, so, uh, today's speaker, Dr. Orun Bantapadhai, is the current director of the CSIR Institute, Indian Institute of Chemical Biology in Kolkata. His research interest lies in the identification of protein biomarker for risk assessment of cardiovascular disease, understanding the biochemical basis of compromised reverse cholesterol transport in humans, Inflammation resolution in flux stable and implications in atherosclerosis, unveiling mitochondrial dynamics in cardiac hypertrophy, microRNA mediated molecular regulation of mitochondrial dysfunction in cardiac hypertrophy, and identification of small molecules for the management of respiratory diseases. He has received several awards and honors, including the FNASC and the FASTT. He has a number of patents and almost 50 research articles to his name. So that's the formidable repertoire of uh, Dr. Bandhupadhyay. We are all eager to listen to today's talk, which is titled Nurturing a Creative Mentality. Over to you, Arun. Thank you, Professor Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. 
Professor Inar Banerji Roy. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here and talk before you, all of you. And uh, especially I am very excited and I am tense also because my teachers are here. So my students, my teachers and many other teachers are there, especially my PhD supervisor, Professor Sumi Bhattacharya, my teachers, mm -hmm. Professor Sili Bhattacharya and many other people are here. So uh, possibly some of the people... Uh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, sir, but someone had started presenting their screen. So you'll have to start your presentation, uh, share your screen once more. Okay. So you cannot see and my I screen? I request... No, sir, it's gone. Okay, okay. And I again request all the participants to please turn off your videos and please do not share your screens. Uh, Ms. Shrucharita Basu, Ms. Kamalika Roy, please turn off your videos. Yeah. Can I see it? Yes, sir. It's coming. Yes. So, uh, basically, uh, actually, I I speak in this uh, in, on this topic in many occasions uh, because uh, we this talk is primarily uh, for the students and uh, in CSIR we have to sometimes talk to the students to encourage their uh, mentality for creativity and taking science as a career option. So this is the sixth talk in this uh, in this topic. So a little bit change here and uh, since I uh, we can easily talk about our science, our uh, subject, but I thought Sunday evening would be uh, a different uh, time to just relax. So I don't want to bother bother with data methodology interpretation discussion. Just I want to provoke you to think in this way because this is the need of the hour. And uh, I begin with uh, so there's a title of my talk is nurturing creative mentality. I begin with my institute, CSIR IICV. I don't show the building picture, but I show the uh, picture, which is very famous. Uh, it shows that uh, our sci founder scientist, Dr. J.C. Ray, and his uh, clinician friends who established this institute, IICV Kolkata, they are taking a uh, you know, oral cholera vaccine, oral cholera vaccine, much before the oral polio vaccine was popular. Uh, so they first discovered that oral cholera vaccine, oral form, and then uh, oral polio became very popular. So IICV scientist, Dr. J.C. the founder scientist, discovered this. So I'm proud of this um, uh, institute and uh, being the scientist and director of this institute. So I have to some, uh, I just have some disclaimer. So this topic, this lecture is not directed to any policy makers, government or organizations. Opinion is my personal and no bearing with my position. The target audience is students, that they are especially to encourage opting SNT in their career and to stimulate rational thinking in the society in general. I start with my acknowledgement because I have been, my thinking is influenced by reading all these books. So some of the uh, paper uh, books should be acknowledged here. So Selfish Gene, Brief Candle in the Dark, and many other books written by Richard Dawkins, especially important for the zoologist. Uh, all the zoologists should, should, uh, students should read these, these books. Uh, otherwise, you will not be a complete zoologist. And the Sapiens, Homer Givers, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, three books of Yuval Noah Harari. You know, many of you know him. The Rana Species, written by Anthony Brand and David Riegelman. David Riegelman is a famous uh, uh, neurobiologist. He writes in a different way. You read this book. The Wings of Fire, APJ Abdul Kalam. It's another famous book of our past president and our missile man. Uh, Elon Musk, uh, he's a, a new a billionaire scientist and technocrat. So he's written by uh, a journalist, Ashley Lenz. 
radical uncertainty very recently published this just in 2018-19 by written by two uh, economists John Kay and Marvin King attitude Jeff Keller it's a motivational book and Wikipedia Google and also Nature Review Cardiology 2020 very recent article so I will just describe our the need for creativity and uh, how can how can you create creative uh, uh, mentality and why we need to foster creativity. So you can see that sometimes we may face the radical uncertainty. What is radical uncertainty? Radical uncertainty means we can face situation which cannot be predicted. The dinosaur didn't know that they would be eradicated once blessed by a, uh, the cosmological disaster. Mostly it is meant for cosmological disaster. But now we are we have faced a certain uncertainty. The modern civilized, the scientific advanced society. So I begin with this first: that what uncertainty we, we are facing now, and because of this, uh, so um, uh, this, they said I just uh, make this quoted quotes uh, relevant to this uh, topic. So I can read this uh, from this Annihilation of Man by Leslie Paul. Yeah, it is written that all life will die, all mind will cease, and it will be all as if. It had never happened. But it was predicted 10 million, millions of years from now, but not now. But we just facing situation that as if human even could be extinct, but it is, of course, it is not. So, well, and it happens many times. It happened in earlier time also. Many people know that the famous um, the flu, the Spanish flu in 1920, 100 years back, 100 years back. But in 1943, you know, many people, are, many of you don't know. So I just did a, a page from a diary of a young girl by Annie Frank. Annie Frank used to write diary, a 13, 14, 12, 13 years, years girl. He used to die, she used to write diary every day. And she actually died because of the uh, horrors of a uh, victim of the, uh, the Second World War. And uh, she, she, uh, but the, her diary was found by uh, her father. Her father was survived. And her father published this as a book, and the book name is The Diary of a Young Girl. And I found there in one of the pages that Dear Kitty, actually always Annie Frank used to write in the two Kitty letters, but it is not it's an imaginary figure. So shattering things are happening. Diphtheria reigns in Ellie's home. So she is not allowed to come into contact with us for six weeks. It makes very awkward for food and shopping, not to mention missing her companionship. Wednesday, 17 November 1943. Imagine 1943, similar situation was there, but it is not virus, it is because of bacteria, diphtheria. And interestingly, six weeks, so you have to be confined in the room for six weeks. So this happened, happens many times in our society, but it is not expected in 2020. This is a situation in 2020, August 2020. It is from a newspaper cutting. You can see that, that uh, nobody is there, no one. You know, Homo sapiens is there. It's completely empty road. And because why? So I just we are, we are go into what just was simplified diagram. It's, it looks very complicated, but it's very simple. It's it's like any I know many some of the audience people are there in the audience. They may not be from science background. So it's very simplified things. This simple virus, the coronavirus too, the novel coronavirus. It, it's so simple that its simplicity made our life difficult. That's what I want to say. So how, why it is so simple? So it is nicely described in Nature Review Cardiology just two months back because they are trying to find out why this virus is uh, causing multi-organ failure. So they nicely studied. And so they have, it, it's a, the virus is very simple in the sense that it is a 27 kb genome, 27 kb genome, very small genome. And it expresses four structural proteins and the four structural proteins, just M protein, S protein, E protein, and B protein. Just four structural proteins, and it's very interesting that from the the M the five prime M region, but the, this from this side it is two clean sides for the non scientist I'm saying two sides. So from there this is called five prime side, this is called three prime side. From five prime region it expresses two proteins. From two proteins, fourteen proteins are expressed. That is very unusual. Unusual situation. From two proteins, fourteen proteins are expressed, and this is unusual because. These two proteins are clipped into 14 proteins. So the virus utilizes 
it's, they spend very less energy for gene express protein, protein synthesis. So protein proteins are expressed in one go or two go, just two steps. And from this side, from three prime side, there are four proteins, S proteins, M proteins, N proteins, proteins are expressed. And the image, the virus goes into the cell by, you know, by the spike, the spike protein attached to the surface of the cell, human cell, and then it multiplies, very rapidly multiplies. It, take our, it uses our facility and multiplies. But uh, what I want to say is very interesting, many of you know by, the, by, by, by this time, that it has two important criteria over COP2, SARS coronavirus and SARS coronavirus 2. SARS coronavirus 2 is unique and very dangerous, which we are facing now. SARS coronavirus 2 has two important changes. One is mutation in the RBD, receptor binding domain. Because of this mutation, five amino acids are mutated. Because of this mutation, this virus is very efficient to attach with, with our cell surface. And another insertion is there in the S1 and S2 region. Because of this insertion, this protein is quickly clipped by in every type of cells. Normally, virus, coronavirus goes into the lungs and it, it, it invades our lungs for cells. But this virus can go into every cells, all organs, because of this insertion, this furin cleavage sites. So it, and that is the, one of the reasons that is why we are getting the, having the multi organ failure. So, so why, why this is so simple? Now, it, you can relate to our origin. How we originated? We originated a primordial soup. So, the primordial in the soup, soup uh, the nucleotides or very simple nucleic acids are produced because of the UV radiation. And so, when, when many scientists have shown it is possible. The Miller and Urey experiment very nicely shown that they, we originated from water in the water, uh, CH4, NH3, and hydrogen with the spark, and the nucleotides are produced. And the nucleotide, nucleic acids are produced, the early stage of nucleic acids, from in non, a non-organic source. So non-organic source, now we become organic, and then your few, our future is going to be inorganic. So this the, the, the philosophy in this is here, it is like this. So once nucleic acids are produced, nucleic acids try to become housed somewhere. How it will be housed so that it can protect. The primary purpose of the nucleic acid is to protect itself. And it protected in the form of some membrane. And then the modern cells, you can see the modern cells are protected because the nucleic acids are protected. So genes are protected and the genes are immortalized. That's why it's called selfish, selfish gene. So the virus, this virus, so anyway, it is trying to multiply. So the virus, the coronavirus is also the, has a relationship with this. I, I want to relate in this way that the virus is a self-organizing entity. It is just replicating, replicating, replicating. And so we become the replicator of, our, of the genes, of the nucleotides. So the, we, have, we and all animals. So we, so humans, that is why it's called that animals are humans are the outcomes of blind evolutionary process without any goal, without any purpose. What is our purpose? We are just, we become the replicator of the genes. Even if we are extinct today, our genes are immortalized. Genes will be somewhere, somewhere then preserved in this earth or in the universe. So then, then we become superior over the years. We separate it from our ancestors. And then we become, you know, so most sapiens become superior. That is the topic of today's lecture. Why we become superior. So homo, homo sapiens control the universe. Homo sapiens controls the earth at this moment because of many features. So nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Very good said. I think this chimpanzee is also thinking the same thing. It is trying to solve. I don't know whether it is possible or not, but it, it is, and it may be thinking in like this. So we are significantly different in uh, in terms uh, with respect to our nearest uh, uh, our nearest ancestor, the chimpanzee, our siblings, the chimpanzee. But we have ninety nine percent or nine, more than ninety percent similarity in our gene. And why? But we are controlling the world. Homo sapiens or humankind are launching spaceship to the moon, whereas our Siblings, the messy siblings, chimpanzees are throwing, throwing stones in the zoo to the visitors. So that's the difference. Why it happens? Mm -hmm. So the Homo sapiens be superior because of three important revolutions. Number one is the cognitive revolution, which happened seventy thousand years back ago. Agricultural revolution, which 
which happens 12,000 years ago, and the most important scientific revolution that is 500 years ago. Just before, just 500 years back, the scientific revolution started. And the modern scientific revolution started only 100 years back. So <clears throat> by this, within this short period of evolution, we are developed to, so to this extent. So may not be, uh, maybe after a few hundred years, virus like coronavirus will not be able to uh, defy, uh, will make us housed inside our uh, house. So what is cognitive evolution? Cognitive revolution indicates the planning complex action. We became able to call complex plan complex action. Protection from wildlife, how we, we, we our ancestors became able to protect themselves from the wild animals and hunting large animals so that they are not dependent on the, uh, the daily hunting on, for the food. And they try to understand they make the cohesive groups, the larger groups, and then most importantly, the cooperation. Only the only species in the Earth cooperate can cooperate flexibly is Homo sapiens. Chimpanzee cannot cooperate. Chimpanzee can cooperate to a small extent. Say five, six, seven, ten, one hundred chimpanzee can cooperate. Not but one thousand chimpanzee cannot cooperate. If one thousand chimpanzees in a place, there will be chaos. But this cooperation of human cooperation. See, our prime minister comes, gives lecture. Millions of people are there. Millions of people go go home back, go 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 go, go back to their home, but there is no chaos. Every day, millions of people are coming to train station, going their home back in the evening. There is no chaos. There is no casualty. That is cooperation. So humans started cooperating because of the cognitive evolution. And another important point is humans are innovative. That that is that is a justification why you need to innovate. So. Now that get in invention, you know that, that is the invention of fire. So before I go to into the details, let me just explain what is the difference between invention, innovation, and creativity. So creativity is basically a fuzzy idea which cannot be clarified until it is made into prototype. Whether invention is new to the world, discovered or created, and innovation is making the invention into a product form. I'll give you an example. It is based on, the creativity is based on thinking of new things. You think something new. And invention based on primary scientific skills. Innovation based on broad set of strategic, marketing, and technical skills. This is very important. By based on a uh, broad set of strategic, marketing, and technical skills. So this is basically creativity as ideas. And you need cash to create ideas, that is invention. But ideas will give you cash. Say, for example, the human thought that, okay, some hormone will be, some protein will be increased in the uh, urine at the time of pregnancy. And then they invented the protein called ACG, that is invention. Then they showed that ACG, ACG is there in the urine when a uh, woman is pregnant. And, uh, and then it, in the, in, you know, they made this possible to detect by making a kit. That is the innovation. So once it is innovated, then you get cash. So this is very critical in our society because you have to understand that you need studies. Many scientists make many inventions, but it is not uh, the, it doesn't go to the market because of the lack of marketing strategy and technical skill. So why do we need to create? You can answer, you can tell that okay, for better life, but because but that is okay. But at the same time, we have the, we are genetically programmed to uh, create because human adapt to everything around very quickly. So why do humans adapt to? Why do human adapt everything very around so quickly? Because of our brain is designed so. How it is designed? We are designed for repetitive suppression action. We are not satisfied with something for a long time. You say, for example, the we the evolution of telephones. Rotary phones turns into push buttons, which turn into bricks like cell phones, then flip phones, then smartphones. Say for now, at this moment, 2020, we have all of your smartphones. You are fine. You are satisfied. We don't need anything more. Everything can be possible into using this smartphone. But after five years, we'll have another phone, another type of phone, maybe pump, pump phone. So we, we are not happy with whatever we have. And that makes us creative and we try to create. Therefore, to innovate is human. 
See how we made waves by simple, simple innovation. The Homo sapiens made, which cannot be possible by the other 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 animal. So manual labor, the manual labor made easy just by passing one brick to other person, other person, other person, and it can travel to say distance of 500 meter from this spot. And the another the very important discovery was the invention was the assembly line. This shows that car manufacturing relied on horse-drawn carriages to deliver each frame to the workers in say 100 years back, 1930, before 1930, 1920, 1915. This is a car make, uh, manufacturing factory, small Ford manufacturing factory, is the oldest manufacturing factory. So if every part of the car used to uh, uh, carry it in the delivered into the mechanic, and mechanic used to assemble all parts together to make a car. It was an outdated, backdated system, it was not an energy efficient system. So these gentlemen, the Henry Ford, he revolutionized the car industry, automobile industry. He, the modern car is designed by Ford. And so what did he do? So they, they discovered the assembly, Ford car assembly. So moving assembly line was discovered on 7 October 1930. What, what did they do? The, instead of the machineries will go to the uh, mecha mechanic, the whole car, the whole under constructing under construction car, assemble roll into the person, the mechanic. So each mechanic will in, they assemble their own part to the whole car and the car and the car will build. That is called assembly line. So this is a an important dis uh, this is an important discovery in the history of humankind because see this discovery may uh, change the car industry. His innovation reduced the time it took to build a car from more than 12 hours to two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. And not only that, this was accepted. This was now borrowed by many other industries at that point of time, namely breweries universities. So everybody followed the assembly line system. And you can see the modern assembly line system is more modern, but it is not now. It is now obsolete. Now, this is the modern assembly line system. So no homo sapiens is there. Everything is done by robot. So in the whole flow of 126 factories of uh, Ford throughout the globe, the no human sapiens is there. Everything is controlled by robots. So that is ter terrifying for the next generation, young generation. I will come to that. Similarly, in the biotechnology sector, since most many of you are bio the, from the bi biology, I, I just want to give an example that how the uh, innovation makes possible to uh, synthesize, they sequence the insulin chain. Insulin, so the insulin protein is very important when people realize that insulin is necessary to control the diabetes. So it was necessary to sequence the insulin protein. The insulin has two chains, A chain plus sequence 21 amino acids, B chain containing 30 amino acids. And so what this uh, gentleman did, Sanger, breaking the insulin molecules into pieces and the sequencing the shorter fragments Finally, insulin was sequenced, very innovative strategy, and he got World Prize in 1958. He got another Nobel Prize in 1980 for similar method, so for similar innovation, innovative method for DNA sequencing. So he got another Nobel Prize in So he got two times World Prize in medicine and chemistry. So what is the difference with other animal? Why does why doesn't we think creatively? Because its neurons are fixed into place and pass signals from input to output like firefighters, passing water pails in a bucket. This is called autopilot mode. So like we have give some, some input and with response to some input, some you get some effect that is output. That is called autopilot mode. The way our education system runs, sorry to say, and this we, we prepare some zombies. So the zombies run country, pre configured routine. In autopilot mode means we go to, so when we learn driving, we have to be very careful. But so once we know the, the driving, we are an expert, we go to our office, we don't think how we'll go, how we'll cross the signal, how we'll go to the bylane and lens, it, com it is a complete autopilot mode. So our brains, our circuits are fixed, they have learned the system, so now it is autopilot mode. You don't need to learn every day this technique. So this is the modern zombies, this is terrifying, see? People, students, many students, many people are busy with stick and glue to those smartphones and cell phones, and this they are they are becoming zombies. 
example many of you have seen this cds thanks to our admitted education system you can see the how yeah, he, how did he uh, mess up in his teacher's lecture because he ran the that autopilot mode the correction so but why innovation is necessary innovation is necessary because economy depends on innovation we talk about economy we said economy is bad economy is not good our country is not good economy is not good but we have to innovate without innovation our economy country will not be developed See, for example we become we were, we were rich now we become poor in 1775 25% of world gdp was controlled by india 80% two third of the economy was world economy is controlled by china and india and southeast asia but in 1950 Four percent of world GDP is controlled by India, so we become we were rich, and within two hundred years we become poor, thanks to our our British rule and many other factors. In 1750, this region Bengal was the richest province in India, and in 1775, unfortunately, famine killed millions in Bengal. Why? Why did it? Why is it like so? See. these are the statistics information these are these are written by western scientists western historians western writers so it is linked to this central dogma when whole europe was busy for this after 1500 or 1700 after 1750 for scientific revolution and many other things our country our government our vidain governor rulers were busy with their <coughs> daily activities they are just quite indifferent for the whole world whole europe on what is going on in western world the pip the emperor and these kings were busy dealing dealing with their wives and the and their mistress and this and we become the poor within 200 years this is the central dogma to innovation as a western concept so the resource we need to do something To do to do research, we need to innovate. To discover, we need fund the research. And for do research, we need fund resources. So significant amount of resources are necessary to do research. But if the, this will give you power, government, businessman, funder, politician, they think that if they give, if it, it will give power. If if it is given, if you get power from your research, they will fund you. So the, this is a central dogma, and it is understood very correctly. by the western businessmen government kings queens over the last 200 300 years that is why they are the power they are the super power and we become poor see for example this is from the book written by abij abdul kalam in his wings of fire it shows that professor shotis dhawan and uh, and i i is uh, uh, abdul kalam explaining slv c results to prime minister indira gandhi see prime minister of a country visited the laboratory not only one prime minister several prime minister prime ministers after prime ministers visited laboratory which laboratory the laboratory which will give power to the politician or to the 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 country if this is the history you know that we only missed the moon by whisker prime minister narendra modi consoled the then chairman of isro and to the whole scientific fraternity that was very very emotional moment that become the history so the across human history creativity is successful in a society but failure is encouraged i repeat across human history creativity is successful in a society but failure is encouraged abdul kalam wrote in his book when agni launch was failed lakshman wrote a the article the fault was in the press button switch i didn't make it didn't make contact so the whole country was laughing whole media was laughing making jokes ridicule the scientist and then so that's one failure so that is he, he just repented he regretted he, he wrote in his book so the adaptive innovation is a western concept these people they thought that okay we have to spend money so that we will get we will get something science scientific research requires money it's not a very easy job it's not cheap 
it so if you understand try to understand how your yeah, the coronavirus that changes infects or they affects the, your immune system you have to you need chemicals consumables microscope machines in addition to the uh, your manpower and the other setup it you it, it requires money suppose say two gentlemen mr Mo, dr murthy submitted a project the project aims at understanding the infection of the udder of a cow of cows the cow's udder is infected with some bacteria virus so the project the scientist wants to understand that and the the application is the outcome will be the say 10% because of infection cows milk production is 10% is reduced so it can improve milk production another project is subjected to the same submitted to the same funding agency in same batch and both the scientists have similar efficiency another scientist say mr ramaswamy say submitted another project and in the this project says that the title is the understanding the psychological impact of the cows when they are separated from the cubs you can understand very easily which project will be supported the first one because the first one 10% milk production is reduced so it has some economy but you add one sentence in the second project in the second project you add one sentence that because of this this psychological impact 10% milk production is also affected there but at the same time if we understand the psychological impact we can understand how how can what molecules can be, can be discovered because of this research there is a 250 billion dollar market for understand or drug market for the cows to improve their psychology so the second project will be supported because it has economy he use impact in the economy. so the way we present so it depends on the scientist so if you can convince the your powerful leaders that it is important to economy so then the project will be funded so that is the uh, politics and economics and science so western world realize that another example i will give you here miss so the queen isabella queen isabella made fortune out of the one just one decision simple decision when christopher columbus wanted inventors for his voyage to western countries to america nobody supported him then one day he met queen isabella and queen isabella supported said that okay we will support your voyage because it was a lot of money but queen isabella gave a condition that if you whatever wherever you go wherever whichever land you discovered it will be ours and it it is history so wherever the, the whatever country they discovered where the christopher columbus discovered and america become spain colony the spanish colony spain so they become so they, they made fortune so they realized this but our our society in our society just 200 years not only ruled by british not only exploited by foreign rulers but also we were indifferent our indifferent attitude to everything made us poor from the rich so the western concept is now now again more advanced so now the western concept is adaptive innovation shaping homo sapiens they are shaping these three gentlemen many of the young star many of the students if you know this elon musk larry page and mark zuckerberg they are changing the homo sapiens they you know how they are changing i will not go into the detail and they are changing the whole homo sapiens so that one day we will be useless class the example they are they are just displacing robot and everywhere they are robot robot and robot the humans will be outclass say for example now we have a so many drivers over diver drivers committed suicide because of the pandemic situation they lost job but think of it that is a temporary problem we will be facing a huge problem in future see the automatic car there will be no driver so driverless cars will be around the streets and not only this one driver you know if you don't need driver but each type they drive this car many cars can communicate with them they will communicate in the clouds so that one car can understand how they, they what other cars are also thinking 
on other cars in the jet traffic jam. What is the traffic situation around, say, 5, five kilometer, 10 kilometer, 20 kilometers? So they will be more efficient than human. And so, and what human will do? Human will be useless, turn into useless class. So what Western society is thinking? They will give minimum basic income. But what about India? Can we do it? We thought that, okay, this technology will bring more job to us. But it, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it will not be like this. It will not be like earlier French Revolution, Industrial Revolution. It is a different situation now. Because see, you can see from the pandemic region, you can just give support. Government can support minimum just food. But you cannot be supported for a long time. See, even a few months back, my one of my doctor friends said that he, his wife earns money by reading the, the uh, autoradiograph from sent from America. So American doctor clinics, say Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they do lot of autoradiographs test, and the autoradiographs are sent to Indians and Chinese doctors. They read it and they give the report. By evening, they get the report. Next morning, they get the report. Patient think that as if it is coming from a yeah, they are, they are doctors. It was so, so many people are working like this. But now, so there is a system. There is a Watson, IBM Watson. IBM Watson, uh, IBM is feeding Watson is thousands and thousands and millions of autoradiographs to teach what is it, what is it, what is it. And then the IBM Watson is reading the autoradiograph. So you don't need you Indian, you don't need Chinese for your uh, jobs. For your to do that, and similarly, say there's many or other based um, robots are being installed in many places, so humans are becoming jobless. And our gloomy future, if we don't change our attitude, we don't change our thinking, we will be immigrants, we will remain as immigrants, or we will remain as Western colored unless we change our style. But Indians are not stupid. If you don't, you know, Dr. Manilal Bhomik, one of the many people are there. So many genius people are there in India. Indians are doing very fantastic in India and also outside in Western world. See, say, for example, Dr. Munilal Bhumi, the, the poor fellow from Mainapur village, he migrated, he studied physics and he migrated to America a long time back. And his research changed the way the eye surgery is being done. He discovered the LASIK surgery because of his discovery. And he made so much money that he hired Americans in, in America. He, he, he created institute, he established and founded institutes of theoretical physics, and he hired Americans in his institute. Not only Americans, he hired Nobel laureates in his institute. So you Indians are Indians are very intelligent, but our society is not intelligent. India can do it. There are a lot of examples. You can see our women are doing wonder. These three women scientists led India's Mars mission. It's a history. It is also in the movie, Mongolian. Our Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan 2 successful enters into moon's orbit. We have a success story. And our game changer, we have a game changer. This is our Dr. Honorable Minister of Science, Minister of Science and Technology. He is our minister, my boss also. Minister of Health and Family Welfare and Minister of Health Science. He is now fighting the coronavirus and fight from the front line. He, you know why, why he is famous? Because he eradicated polio from India. Because when he proposed that oral, oral polio can be delivered to each village, every village, many people objected. Many doctors said it is not possible because it requires cooling, freezing, so it will not be possible, but he took the challenge. So millions of people, first he was, you get, he did pilot study, one million children were uh, immunized, later he immunized million and million people. So the Honorable Prime Minister or uh, Prime Minister Otto Bihari Vajpayee, he permitted him to do that. And he said, by he said the doctor was first about that. So this our, we have game changer people in our society. So now, this is the biotechnology things. Now we have we have the golden age of biotechnology. Why we are in the golden age of biotechnology? Because of the speed of technological progress, a better understanding of human biology, and bigger toolkit. You can see, you can visualize the how a drug molecule can bind with the protein, and they say inhibitory domain, or the how it inhibits the enzyme activity of the protein. 
using the 3D structure or the crystallography. So the, this biology, technology tools are now easily available and highly developed. Of course, it requires money, it requires investment, but if we can invest, convince our politicians or economists that, okay, we, this will give you power, it will give you money back, money back, then it will, it will be funded. And we have bigger toolkits, CRISPR case, like things, CRISPR case, it, it can evolutionize our, our genome, change in genome, edit genome, and many other things. So what is the need of our? I'm just going, going to end within a few minutes. The need of the art is creative mentality. Creativity does not emerge out of thin air. We depend on culture to provide a storehouse of raw materials. So you need something. You need some society. You need supporting society. The society, the system, which to give, which tolerate risk, which encourage creative risk taking. Our children are not raised like this. Our children are raised always with some with some instruction, and we te teach our children not to take risks. So that is why we have to change our society, our thinking, our attitude. So this is the story. This is the story which we need to have be creative, and we need we need nurture the creative mentality. Just I will end with just one of my effort. Just one slide, two slides. This is my uh, the results of my research over say, several years, which we I made a prototype. My group, my students, and me we made a prototype which could detect from our research, which could detect the rheumatic heart disease using just uh, the lateral flow device. This is relatively marketed and needs some fine tuning. So this is out of my own research. I'm trying to do the same things. It's it's taking it requires a lot of risk and it may help this kind of people, poor people. Which are supported, which are we suffer suffers from uh, the, the people suffer from uh, RHD. Normally, the poor in social lower uh, belonging to lower socioeconomic status in India and the uh, developing countries. So I end up with the quote: that "As you go through life, you will see that there is so much that you don't understand, and the only thing we know is that things don't always go the way we plan." And if we, if you have seen the Land King movie, it is there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir, for this very interesting talk. Um, we have a few questions, uh, so oh, yes, sure. I shall uh, put them forth now. So the first one is from Antisha Sarkar. Do epigenetic modifications in our DNA? control our creative mentality? Like how some people are more creative than others? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, simply, I don't know the, whether genetics could change your mentality because my topic says that it may not. So it is thinking, your practice, your attitude, and the society. <laughs> so basically we are uh, very similar. We are, we are born with similar ability, but we change because of our attitude and our uh, circumstances. Okay. Uh, the second one is from Shomajit Biswas. He wants to know that can we say epigenetics support Lamarckism in a modern way? Yeah, so Lamarckism is not a very uh, modern concept. It is almost outdated. Uh, so you have to think of this uh, post uh, Darwinian concept. Okay. Uh, no? Uh, Sanchari Gorai uh, is asking that can we say that the CRISPR-Cas and gene editing is a fruit of innovation in genetic research? Yeah, sure. Of course. It will completely revolutionize the way we are living, the way diseases are being treated. And if there will be future, it, it could be, let's just say, genetically designed baby because of CRISPR-Cas. It's really innovative. Okay. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the reason of the exceeding mediocrity in, in innovative ideas across fields of science and arts? Has the human race reached a stagnation? Of course not, because we have. It, it appears now that we don't need anything. But I said that humans are. You have a free, uh, frontal vision, frontal cortex. You always think, and you uh, you, you you can discover many things. You 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 wonder what you can discover, but. There is unlimited things. 
leave it there. So we have many things to do. We have to go to the other planet. This planet will be totally uh, abandoned. So we have to do many things. I can give an example. If people are always they see rocket. How rockets are launched? Say so the main launcher is wasted, but Elon Musk changed this. So he used a he discovered the reusable launcher. So launch the the main mid module is coming back to the Earth again, and again it is being used for another launching. So that's the innovation. So human mind is not of course saturated. Uh, so that was from Sajukta Chaudhary. Uh, the next one is from Sumaya Rahman. With all the creative innovations, still many people are uh, malnourished and in poor economy. Kindly highlight the points about how can the researchers and scientists contribute to the uplift upliftment of the society rather than making money. See, researchers, scientists' job is not to solve the poverty. Scientists' job is to understand science and discover it. Politician and plan planners will do it. So the, we uh, we ask question, we solve the problem. That's our their duty, not to solve the poverty. Poverty and other things are the outcomes of scientific discovery. No doubt it. Okay. Uh, so, so Shantari Gorai has another question. Can India be the next superpower of innovation in science if the education system changes? Because we have a huge population pressure. Because nowadays, many of us are like Chatur and not like Rancho, taking from your three idiots example. A fantastic question. I was going to tell this name, but I forgot the name Chatur. Yeah, we need Chatur Ramalingam. Uh, we don't need Chatur Ramalingam. We need Rancho as a Chachur. Uh, we are correct, absolutely correct. And uh, thanks for this question. Yes, we can go. We can be superpower because we can utilize our things. So, uh, But we have to think creative, innovative. We should see. We, we should not. This, this young generation should not waste time. See, because there is no free bread, you have to do something. Otherwise, the India will not be as uh, the, the superpower. Abdul Kalam wrote in his earlier book that in 2020, India will be super. India will be developed country. But uh, later, later he said that it is not possible. He also, yeah, I, we know that it is not possible because of many reasons. But India could be. Unless we change the way we uh, our education system, we will not be able to achieve that. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, you can stop your presentation so we can have your video uh, on the full screen. Oh, sure. Uh, so we have a few more questions. Uh, there's one from Bishadeep Ghosh Roy who wants to know if a student has a creative mind but hasn't got any national fellowship. Will there will any lab in India support him or her to pursue research based on selection only by looking at curiosity, creativity, learning attitude, and discussions only? See, the, this, these are different uh, uh, questions altogether. Policy things. Uh, our society is like this. So you need awards, other things. But in general, the, the creative people, the, the actual the people who work hard and they do try to do something meaningful, they will be discovered somehow. Uh, our society also our society has a problem, of course, problem because we just we can distinguish. We distinguish. We do distinguish the people, the student who got seventy four and who got ninety four. So we distinguish two people seventy four, ninety four. But it was not earlier. It was not practiced earlier. When the education become mass education was popular, this kind of mass systems appeared earlier in Shakespeare time. People leave left university either pass or fail. But later, at that time, there was no marks. Now, because of the social different changes, and India actually adopted that very systematically, the marks, marks, marks. And the people who are in the in the in the main uh, position, good position, they are they are having good marks. So they patronize all these things, mark system, and the mark system is continuing and continuing. But it is not correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Deepak Kumar Poria wants to know, would you like to share some specific steps that CSIR IICD is taking to promote innovation uh, in oppose, uh, as opposed to Western adaptation in scientific culture? Oh, sure. Actually, CSIR does uh, encourage innovation. CSIR has a lot of systems and IICD also has a lot of systems. We do encourage and I specifically uh, encourage this because 
uh, see, uh, we don't have to say that we will innovate, we will do something. You just do very good, fantastic science. Today's good science and technology will be later, uh, tomorrow's technology or the innovation. So we have to be very uh, quality science scientists. Automatically, things will come out. Uh, sir, I would once again like to request you to stop your presentation so that we can have your video on the full screen. I will stop it. No, it's still coming. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we have a few more questions, if uh, you allow. Yes. Uh, so yeah, sure. Shuraj, yeah. Shurajit Jalik wants to know, you have said Indians are intelligent, but our society is not. How can you say this? Our culture should be adaptable in the whole world. Yeah, that's just a different culture you see are saying. Our culture means culture for supporting innovative, innovative research, innovative mind, risk taking, failure. If you have you fail your society, your parents will not support you. So it does your does does your parent uh, your father or mother's encourage failure? No. If you fail, fail. So that's I, I meant that. Our culture is good, of course it's good, but culture in respect to this kind of attitude and other support. Uh, yeah. Okay. Otono Banerjee's question is according to your opinion, how could we come out from this tug of war situation? That is, on one hand, we need creativity for technological advancement. On the other hand, we are going to lose huge number of labor hands and their earning. What will be the way out in our country? Oh, yeah. You see, if you have, like, what a Western community will do, what is their plan? Say, because of the robotics and other things, so they, they will support the people who are who will be useless. People will be useless at that time or after a few years because you don't. But you to make your to make yourself useful, you have to be very innovative. That's my point, and so there is no other way. <clears throat> but some people will be uh, so Western community can support because they will have huge profit, huge margin. But in India, it is not possible. So we uh, that's that's my point. So you have to think very very hard, and the policymaker also. Okay. Um, uh, sir, uh, there is one question from Professor uh, Rakesh Potobal. Uh, so I am going to read out the question, and if you allow, maybe we can ask Professor Potobal to come uh, to. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can talk ask with so his question is: Your central point is that Homo sapiens were successful because they could cooperate, and chimpanzees could not. However, the whole project of Henry Ford. In fact, with his assembly line method, destroyed the idea of cooperation and set up the economy of competition, leading to the robotic of today. Thus, the example may be contradicting the assumption. Uh, don't you think your emphasis on a very narrow idea of innovation is so reductive that it means the only project which the Prime Minister of India can sponsor is for their popularity? And it has nothing to do with science and innovation in the cognitive universe of innovation. So, do you have yeah, any comments? This is, yeah, this is the way you think, but it is not correct. Uh, I, I think if there is no uh, place for argument of this, my way of thinking like this. So, see, the, the uh, what Henry Ford did is it is not uh, like because of the, we lost this, we discussed the cooperation. This is a narrow way of thinking. And Henry Ford, our manager, our side, cooperation means this evolution, our evolution. We, I, we all from millions, hundreds, of thousands of years because of cooperation. That cooperation, not in the, uh, uh, the in the factory. So that's competition is different things. This competition doesn't uh, they contradict with cooperation. Okay, I hope your uh, question is answered, Professor Butterbell. Uh, so another question is, uh, uh, Amitabh Ghosh wants to know one simple query. 
what is your straight directive to change society towards creativity to change economic development so economic development is, is not my area because there are a lot of economics and planner and thinkers what i and also i don't have, i just my thinking i shared that uh, our attitude and the scientific uh, way the way we are doing research on projects should be changed so, so we should encourage this uh, creativity and innovation uh, kind of projects risk taking and we should ask questions so if you ask a student very very easy things on our one student what or our scientists what is your goal you will say publish a paper in a journal but that cannot be the uh, goal uh, the, the goal should be ask a question address a question and solve it so if uh, suppose i if I, somebody asks what is your goal i'll ask i'll say my goal is to understand how plaques are ruptured at the time of heart failure. How can I predict? Uh, how can I make a make an algorithm which can predict heart failure? So that should be my goal, not publishing a paper. So that kind of attitude should be changed. So I think that is kind of what uh, Shubhir Ganguly has asked. Don't you think that application-oriented research work is the need of the hour rather than research work merely for academic interest? No, it is right. It is not correct because it is uh, also very disputed things. Uh, I don't want to bring this out. See, there is no difference. Actually, there is no difference between application oriented or basic science oriented. Science is science, the technology is technology. We have to go deep science, and one day today's deep science will be bigger. Basic science will make the the uh, uh, applied science for tomorrow. I will give example like when phosphodiesterase five inhibitor was discovered. It was published in Science. But later, it, it is paid. First of all, five inhibitor become a drug. The Viagra, not drug, Viagra. Viagra become the economy successful. So it, the, science, the scientists didn't discover first of all, five inhibitor to make Viagra. First of all, five was discovered like the science. Inhibitor was discovered as a science. And that become application. Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin didn't do, he didn't try to change the economy of the world. He was just trying to capture electricity in his kite. And that changed the world. So there is no actual difference between applied science and basic science. You do good science and good science. It will automatically help you by applied science. Uh, so, sir, we can take two or three more questions if you don't mind. Yeah, no uh, problem. Uh, Kalpana Singh wants to know, though CSIR announces a lot of activities for school students, rarely directed, uh, but they are rarely directly conveyed to the schools. Can something be done to improve communication between the two agencies? No, it's not correct. We have a now huge uh, uh, advertisement, we uh, announcement, and we have a live visit. Just few, just few months it is stopped, but it is in the internet, in our website. We encourage children to visit our laboratory from 9, 10, 11, 12, college boards, college uh, university students, CSR. Uh, it, it has a lot of policy like this, and it is very open. And we do lecture, or scientists give lecture, motivational lecture. Many uh, occasions in our uh, um, uh, foundation day and many other days. So it's not correct. I think you are not uh, well informed. Uh, you are always welcome to visit our laboratory. We have open day and many other occasions which we, uh, which keep with us, uh, inform this what CSI is doing. Uh, thank, okay. Another one is uh, from one of our own. In the organizing committee, Shonok Shah wants to know, do we envision to move to a world dominated by robots? If so, does artificial intelligence, uh, will artificial intelligence be able to replicate the complexities of human brain and can be used as an alternative? Yeah, it's a difficult to predict now. I, I'm not a prophet, but it is possible. Many things are so possible. I, I, AI can do many things. Uh, so we can hack you. you. AI can hack our algorithm, our brain, what we are thinking, what we are doing, it is possible. So uh, AI has unlimited capacity. Okay. Thank you, sir. I think we'll uh, stop now. And if I'm sorry if some of your questions have gone unanswered. You can always email us if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. So thank you again, sir, for this wonderful talk. I would now like to ask uh, our uh, request our convener, Professor Reina Banerjee, to give the vote of thanks and finish the thank session. You, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Shinjini. That was wonderfully moderated. And uh, thank you to the entire team uh, who is who are working literally around the globe to uh, bring this 
to all of you. Um, a few hundred people are watching you, Professor Bandhapadhyay, on the Google Meet and the YouTube platform, and many more will be watching. And thank you so much for such a wonderful and thought-provoking lecture that you just gave. So I thank was you, listening you. to all the questions, and uh, Rakesh has asked some really interesting questions, and everybody has uh, asked different kinds of questions, and you have fielded them really nicely, Orunda. So um, uh, my special admiration for that. And all the participants, I think uh, today's speaker had uh, uh, opened a lot of, uh, you know, talks for debate. So there can be opinions and there can be opinions. I think uh, what uh, Professor Bondovadre was also trying to do is to uh, make you think in those lines. Right, I right, don't right. think any opinion can ever be the only opinion and the only solution. So I think as a teacher and as a scientist, what he has been trying to do through his lecture and through the different examples is to make you think. So, you know, very smoothly he has taken us over a journey uh, and he has given us perspectives, but actually he is uh, sort of nudging you and, uh, you know, exciting you very delicately. That is what he's trying to do. He's trying to make you think. So I think uh, that has been a wonderful exercise for us all. And I hope uh, uh, you will come back and tell us about your uh, science research also. Sure, and sure. Uh, congratulations on uh, assuming the direction <laughs> and best wishes for your tenure. So with thank that, you. we come to an end to today's session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks everyone for joining and we have some questions. Thank you very much. Great. Bye. Bye.